Hey there! In this video we are going to show you how to play PSOA with the two existing modules included. PSOA can be played by 1 to 4 players in about 1 hour by players with at least 10 years old. If you want to learn how to play the solo mode and campaign, or if you want to see how to prepare the setup depending on the player count, you can watch it by the end of the video right after learning how to play the core game. We have the setup already prepared for two players, with all ready to start writing some poetry. On the center of the table we have the game board, essentially divided in five different spaces. Over here we have each player setup, each playing with a different heteronym. Psoe is played over the course of 12 rounds, tracked by the calendar on the central wheel. And, on each round, the players can move their meeple and take an action, or rest to recharge energies. Every time a player moves their meeple to one of those two coffee shops, they are going to spend some energy to collect inspiration cards to their hand. When a player moves their meeple to the bookshop, they can fulfill the requirements to earn the indicated benefits. As soon as a player moves their heteronym to the Rocio Square, they write a beautiful poem, scoring victory points based on their unique and improved skills. In addition, by matching symbols on the astral map, players can earn additional bonuses. If a player enters Psoa's mind, also mentioned as the metaphysical space, they spend energy to perform the action corresponding to the Psoa meeple. As you can see, gaining inspiration and performing actions uses up the player energy, so from time to time they need to rest to recharge their energies to the plenty. By playing with the Mensage module, the players can score additional points by the end of the game, choosing and playing their own Mensage cards by the time they rest. Ultimately, by playing with the Advanced Heteronyms module, the gameplay is asymmetrical, and each player has their own writing preferences and special characteristics. Before diving into the specifics, there are two aspects you need to consider when placing a meeple. First, the only space the Heteronyms can share is the metaphysical space. After all, in real life they were all created inside Psoa's mind. And second, the Psoa meeple can never enter the metaphysical space. Psoa's body could not be inside his own mind. There is a simple way for you to remember these placement restrictions, by simply looking at the spaces reserved for meeples on the board. Black is the matching color of the Psoa meeple, and grey represents any one of his heteronyms. Each player has a starting hand of three inspiration cards, that can be used to write poems. Inspiration cards are fragments of poems and they always have a specific style and value. Some cards show two different values, from which you choose one when playing the card. When a player moves their meeple to a Brasileira, they can collect new inspiration cards to their hand, always exhausting the depicted cost in energy for each collected card. For example, after moving my Heteronym Meeple to a Brasileira, I decide to take those two cards, exhausting one energy for this card and two energies for this one. In addition, I decide to take this card as well, considering that it does not have any energy cost. To end my turn, I slide the remaining cards to the left and refill the empty spaces with new cards. In Martinho da Arcada, the players can also collect inspiration cards, but in a slightly different way. All the cards have a fixed cost of one energy, but there are two locked cards represented by this icon below. To collect those cards, the player needs to take first the two cards on both sides of the locked one. You should note that the players start with a hand limit of seven cards, which can be increased later. For example, after moving my Heteronym Meeple to Martinho da Arcada, I decide to take those two cards, exhausting one energy for each taken card. By choosing those two cards, I have unlocked this one. However, even if I wanted, I couldn't take it to my hand, considering that I do not have any more energy to spend. In addition, I now have eight cards at hand, so I have to discard one, because I am exceeding the hand limit of 7 by the end of my turn. 
So in my turn, I slide the remaining cards to the left and refill the empty spaces with new cards. The purpose of the bookshop is for the players to improve their own knowledge and acquire new abilities. This bookshop card indicates the requirements to fulfill each possible reward, and the player can choose to fulfill only one, two, or all three requirements one at a time. You should note that you can move the bookshop card once to adjust the requirements to your preferred way. For example, after moving my Eteronium Meeple to the bookshop, I decide to slide down the bookshop card. To get 5 victory points by playing this card, and this bookshelf tile by additionally playing this card. Every time a player gains a bookshelf tile, they have to decide which side they want to be rewarded with. The front side can either grant an additional point for naturalism, classicism or futurism when writing, and the back side is useful to permanently improve the energy maximum in one and to increase the hand limit in two. Once decided the side to benefit with, the tile is then placed in the corresponding place on the player board. You should note that once played, a tile cannot be flipped to the other side to get the hidden reward. Returning to the example and considering the tile I earned by discarding this card, I could place it here as an additional energy and to increase my hand limit in two. Or I could place it here to benefit from now on every time I write poems by playing cards of this type, and this is what I'm going to do. The last aspect you need to consider while playing in the bookshop are the benefits from the astral map. If at least one of the cards you discarded matched one of the symbols depicted, you immediately claim the associated bonus. They can be 3 victory points, a bookshelf tile, 2 inspiration cards or 2 energies. Returning to the example, let's assume that this was the active astral map section. This card I played matches this symbol on the current astral map section, so, as a bonus reward, I would get 2 energies on my player board. To end my turn, I replace the card on the bookshop with the one revealed on the top of the deck. Refill any empty bookshelf spaces with tiles from the corresponding stack on the supply and discard any cards used to fulfill the requirements on the bookshop card. The last physical space to mention is the Hoseo Square, where the players write poems with their personal inspiration cards at hand. This is the most valuable action for scoring purposes, considering that the players use their collected cards and gathered improvements to score victory points. For example, let's assume that I wanted to move my meeple to the Hoseo Square to write a poem. However, there is already another meeple occupying the slot for Eteronyms in Hoseo. As you already know, my Eteronym cannot go there either, because that slot is reserved only for the Psoa meeple. The only option I have to write a poem this turn is to take control of Psoa's body and move it to Hoseo. The player who controls Psoa's body can move and perform actions using the Psoa meeple. As a constant reminder, on each Eteronym tile there is the indication on how to take control of Psoa. By exhausting one energy, the player can flip their Eteronym tile to the other side showing Psoa. From now on, this player can choose between acting as their own Eteronym Meeple or as the Psoa Meeple. You should note that a player can always do this on the beginning of their turn, not depending on the action that they want to perform. When setting up the game, the last player for the first round defined the sitting on the right to the first player, took the initial control of Psoa's body. Every time another player takes control of Psoa's body, the previous player controlling him flips their tile to the Eteronym side. Returning to the example, I exhaust one energy to take control of Psoa's body and move the Psoa meeple to Hoseo. Now, I can choose which cards to play to write a poem and scoring according to my writing styles. To write a poem, the players can discard a set of 3, 4 or 5 cards at a time. The only restriction is for the cards to be played in an ascending order and with no duplicated numbers. However, the cards do not need to be from the same color or with consecutive numbers. 
The player then scores for each card on the set played, the amount of points indicated on their player board for the corresponding type. In addition, the player scores one additional point for each card played next to another of the same color. If there is still a poem tile on Hoseyu matching the written poem size, the player then scores three additional points and take the poem tile to their personal player board. Otherwise, the poem tile is taken from the supply, but the player does not earn any additional points. Returning to the example, I'm going to score three points for each of those two cards and one point for this one. If I had played any cards of this color, I would not have scored points for them. Considering those two cards are from the same color and that they are played next to each other, I score one additional point for consistency with this card. This is a size 3 poem and there is still a poem for it on the board. So I take the poem tile from here to my player board and score three additional victory points. Similarly to the bookshop, if at least one card played matches a symbol depicted on the astral map, the player immediately claims the corresponding bonus. And the last aspect you need to consider while playing in the Hosuyu Square is that you always keep one of the cards used to write a final poem by the end of the game. Returning to the example, let's assume that this was the active astral map section. This card I played matches this symbol on the current astral map section. So, as a bonus reward, I would get two inspiration cards from the top of the inspiration deck. Considering that we are playing with the advanced heteronyms module, I have to check whether or not I can take advantage of my special ability. In this case, my heteronym scores 3 additional points when he is alone in Hoseyu when writing. That is not the actual case, so I do not score any additional points. Overall, I would get in total 11 points for writing this poem. To end my turn, I need to choose one of the cards I played to keep for the final poem, placing it under my heteronym tile and then discarding the remaining played cards. As mentioned before, Psoa's mind is the only space where multiple heteronym meeples can be at the same time. And it is also the only place where the Psoa meeple cannot be placed. To enter the metaphysical space, the player need to exhaust one energy, and then they can perform the action on the space where the Psoa meeple is located without moving. For example, I want to write another poem, and both spaces are occupied with another heteronym and the Psoa meeple. The only option I have to write a poem this turn is to enter the metaphysical space. By exhausting one energy from my player board, I'm now able to act as the Psoa Meeple without moving him. Considering that he is already on the Hoseyu Square, I can write a poem as desired by using the usual criteria. Even though I was acting as Psoa, I still keep a card for the final poem, get the corresponding poem tile, and check for a matching symbol on the available astral map section. By moving and performing actions, the players end up exhausting all their energy. To refuel their energy to the maximum possible, including the extra slots earned with bookshelf tiles, a player can choose to rest, removing their heteronym meeple from the main board and placing him next to their own player board. Besides resting and by astral map bonuses, there is another way for you to gain energy during the game. As a constant reminder, on each player board there is the indication that you can discard cards to gain energy. You should note that a player can do this as many times as desired, but only in the beginning of their turn, not depending on the action that they want to perform. For example, I have no energy left on my player board and I plan to collect some inspiration cards on my next turn. I need to recharge my energies, so I decide to rest, moving my energy marker to the maximum space and removing my meeple from the main board. Considering that we are playing with a mensaging module, I must now play a mensaging card. Each player has a starting hand of two mensaging cards, containing additional possibilities for scoring. The players can play one of those cards each time they rest, and one last time by the end of the game. You should note that the two messaging cards at hand are not considered when validating the hand limit. Returning to the example, 
After recharging energies, I draw a massaging card to my hand and then choose one amongst the three to play. Then, from my remaining cards at hand, I pass one to the player on my left and receive another from my right. By the end of the game, I can earn the depicted victory points on each massaging card, but only in case I have fulfilled the requirements indicated. As soon as all players perform their turn, the round ends proceeding as follows. The first player token is given to the player controlling Psoa's physical body. Then, when playing at two or three players, the neutral heteronyms need to be moved. They always go to the next free space clockwise reserved for heteronyms, if any. Otherwise, they enter the metaphysical space. When moving the neutral heteronyms to outside of the metaphysical space, they always move to the lowest number of the available physical space. You can check the number corresponding to each physical space next to the action iconography on that space. Ultimately, the metaphysical space is rotated one step, turning into the next year on the calendar. As soon as 12 rounds are played, each player is going to write their final poem by choosing a card from their hand and adding it to the ones under their personal heteronym tile. Then, they write the final poem using the same rules as in Rosillo with only two differences. The poem tiles are always taken from the supply and there are no bonuses from the astral map. By playing with the Messaging module, the players choose the last messaging card to play, discard the remaining one and proceed to the final scoring. By playing with the Advanced Heteronyms module, each player scores their written poems in an asymmetrical way. Each poem tile is going to score as many points as depicted on the corresponding heteronym board for its size. In addition, each player scores one victory point for each remaining inspiration card left at hand. The last scoring aspect is regarding to which individual massaging card played. The player with the most victory points by the end of the game is the winner. In case of a tie, the player with the most written poem wins. If there is still a tie, the player with the most bookshelf tiles wins. And if there is still a tie, both players share the victory and the metaphysical space in the posterity. And that is all you need to know to play Psoa in a multiplayer mode. If you want to learn how to play the solo mode and campaign, or if you want to see how to prepare the setup depending on the player count, you can watch it there, now that you know how to play the core game with its two modules. A special thanks to Pythagoras Games for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. If you'd like to see more content like this, let us know in the comments. Until then, stay connected and be safe. See you soon!